Hey everybody. We haven't been the best of beekeepers over the last month. It's just been way too hot outside to want to get dressed up and fool with these hives. Uh, however, it's time that we need to take a look in here. This isn't the best time of the day to come out and deal with your hives. It's only 8.30 in the morning. Uh, if there hadn't been solid overcast, these bees would have had about a half hour to an hour of some dappled light by now, but suffice to say, not a lot of the bees have gone about to start to do their duty. So, I'm going to start referring to these as the brown hive and the white hive. It's just easier. And this brown hive is the one where we know we didn't have a queen, and we ended up putting a frame of brood over here, uh, a frame that had some eggs and some ready to hatch brood as well as some uh, and we basically just left the bees that were in here to be the ones to tend to it so first frame was empty we'll see how this keeps going we've got some new comb on there but it doesn't look like they've started doing anything with it i want to show you guys something if you'll tolerate a little bit of hand holding here over on the MI Gardener channel, Luke was talking about some bridge comb that he had going between his frames. And I want to just point out something a little different that we're doing. And it's just a matter of, I think, how you're, uh, who taught each of us. And I'm not trying to say he's doing anything wrong, but there is a difference. And I made a mistake. So if you notice here, there's a little gap right between each frame caused by these little uh, wedges. I don't even know what the term is. I'm sure they have a name. But we always butt those right up against each other and I was taught that that creates the correct B spacing between the frames. And we nine times out of ten have no bridging. But look, I made a mistake the last time I put the frames together. I left a gap. And look what's happening down between these frames we're getting bridge comb all throughout. So, perhaps I would suggest that if bridge comb is a problem of yours, if you're doing a Langstrom hive like this, keep your frames butted up together. All right, let's see what we got. This is a first frame with the most amount of bees on it, so let's see what we can find. What are they doing, Jennifer? You see honey on there, it looks like. I see honey. A little bit of capped honey. A little bit of uh, nectar. Okay. Alright, let's move on to the next one. I don't see Her Majesty on there. We shouldn't anyway. Uh, we've got moths. Ah, a little bit of wax moth damage here. Alright, so here's what I want you to do. Take your hive tool. Set that down on a corner, like like on the corner of the frame. And then, using your wax tool, kind of carve out around it and just scrape that whole thing off. Just make it look clean to you. Now this was an old frame. This was not even foundation that these bees built. And apparently, either a wax moth got in here or there were, already they, yeah, there were already eggs in the old framework. And they were frames that hadn't been used for quite some time, so suppose anything's possible. It's not easy. Don't be so gentle. Not trying to be. There you go, that'll work. Now in all honesty, that wasn't very much damage for wax moth. So perhaps we're getting away with something. Maybe the bees got to it before it got too bad. Okay everybody, this was our problem. Wax moth. There's a, if I had to guess, a very far instar, as it were. Go ahead and try to uncover it, Jennifer. 
all sorts of cocoons on this frame but there's and that is huge that, that, that one's probably getting ready to spin a cocoon because uh, the auto that you usually see them pretty darn small too we've seen a lot of smaller ones but this is the best one to video so this frame is shot we, we've already got two frames that we're going to completely remove from this hive because of wax moth all right. You see the little one? Oh, there's a little one right there. There you go. So now you've seen a big one. There's a, a fairly small one. You can kind of understand how you might miss that guy. Uh, but once they're doing this kind of damage, you can't miss them. All right, back to work. Here's, here's what's kind of been going on. We went in and we found... Uh, three different frames that had wax moth in varying degrees and stages. Um, also, uh, here's some pictures. We found a black widow uh, on the screen bottom board of this hive. So there's no brood uh, whatsoever. And so we're pretty much just calling this hive quits. Uh, we're looking at 60 days to the first frost. Uh, it's not worth it to me to pay for a queen and all that kind of nonsense. I can get a split off my other hive because I expect to see greater things out of it when we go and crack it open. So our line of thinking right this moment, uh, we'll probably go shake off these frames somewhere else, let these bees come back. The hives are only about five feet apart. Maybe they will reorient into the other one. Otherwise, we're looking at losing less than 200 bees. There's just nothing in the brown hive so if we lose it we lose it uh, but what we don't want is this hive to become so infested that all of the larva uh, from the wax moth and other things just have to walk five feet over here to the other hive and infest the strong hive or try to anyway so what we need to do really is just get rid of this one 